Welcome to the Rain in Threes podcast with Alan Ray and Mike O'Connell. Hello and welcome to the 26th installment of the Rain in Threes podcast. I'm your host, Mike O'Connell, with Nova Hoops legend Alan Ray. A. Ray and I are joined by the former Villanova and Tulane guard, a key member of the 2022 Final Four team, and now at the NBA G League's Sioux Falls Sky Force, our guy Caleb Daniels. CD, thanks for joining us, man. How we doing? We're doing well, man. Thank you for having me. Caleb, what's the deal? <laughs> Just chilling, man, on this long road trip in L.A. Uh, we played the South Bay Lakers first and the Clippers again. Now we're just finishing our road trip with the Clippers again. So we talked about it a little bit, a little bit before we went on air. And uh, you playing with the Sioux Falls Sky Force. Tell me a little bit about what it's like in South Dakota for the people that's never been to South Dakota. That's myself included. <laughs> Listen, man. Um, you know, it, it's not like Philadelphia. It's not like New Orleans for me. But um, it's been quite the adjustment. Honestly, just honestly speaking, I'm I'm grateful for it. But I mean, it's kind of in the middle of nowhere. Um, it's just pretty much hoops for me mm-hmm. out there. Uh, go to work, come back, spend time with my girl, and that's that's pretty much it. But um, it, it keeps me locked in, it keeps me focused, it keeps me on my toes. So um, it's, it obviously it's very cold there too. Um, Got to stay bundled up no matter where you go. It's probably 10 times colder than uh, Philly, so yeah, it's quite the place. <laughs> Let me uh, – I forgot you was a New Orleans guy too. Um, the first time I had crystals was in New Orleans. Um, yeah. The little burgers. You ever had oh. white cat? Look, look. See, you don't even know. You don't even know. <laughs> probably too young. See, I just remembered. <laughs> True, true. <laughs> now, nah, but I had uh, I had crystals. I had went to New Orleans with my wife. We was uh, we just went down there to like I forgot. I think we was going to a wedding or something. Mardi Gras. Nah, nah, it was a wedding. But uh, the, the what's that main street down in in New Orleans that everybody be on? Bourbon Street. Yeah, I was down there. It was hectic, and uh, crystals was there. And I'm a big fan of, like, White Castle from from New York being up north. Like, White Castle and Crystals is, like, the same shit. They got the little small burgers. But I remember uh, being on Bourbon Street, and I seen Crystals, and I seen the little small burgers. And I'm like, oh, hell no. I told my wife, I'm like, nah, we got to go in here. Went in there. Bro, I probably had, like, 20 of them burgers. I'm not even going to lie to you. I was was drunk that night, though. I was. That's it for everybody else, bro. I definitely was. But what's it like growing up in New Orleans, man? Like, that's one of those places that's just deep in the South. A lot of hip-hop roots down there with Lil Wayne and everything like that, obviously. Um, Like, how was that growing up for you um, in New Orleans? And, like, how did you get into basketball? Um, Growing up in New Orleans was uh, pretty cool for me, honestly. Um, Just being a part of that culture being a part of just the everyday life in New Orleans, the festivals, the celebrations, and obviously having a lot of friends and family always being there and coming to support me in my games. And uh, having just my family always there, it's just something that always, like, you know, stuck out to me the most. And I kind of miss it, but, um, you know, as you get older, you go older and whatnot, you just start to want to venture out a little bit. But um, I got into basketball because of my older brothers, honestly. Um, they pushed me since I first started taking it seriously. Um, around the age of six is when I really thought, you know, I really wanted to do it. You know, I, you know, between those ages of two and six, you're thinking like, uh, I don't really know what I want to do. I'm just out here doing whatever. Yeah. But um, <laughs> six, my brothers really started ramping it up for me and um, started telling me like, if this is what you really want to do, we're gonna push you. And um, you know how it is having two older brothers. Yeah gonna try to bully you they're gonna try to you know punk you and whatnot so he the youngest brother i can't go like that Facts. but obviously you can't really help because you know they way older they're gonna punk you around they're gonna try to make you better so um that helped me a lot from the age of six to all the way through high school and um i'm grateful for them they taught me the way so did my parents as well um they set a great example with how they love each other but um, putting us in church first and also 
witnessing how they love each other. Greatest example of that. So, um, growing up in New Orleans was fun, man. It was, it was pretty fun. Obviously, you see a couple things that you're not supposed to see at a young age. It's kind of dangerous there, but, um, you know, my parents did a great job of keeping us out the streets and uh, just showing us the way, you know, being a great example for us to follow. What about that food? First time I had, first first time I had boudin was down in New Orleans. Boudin, oh, good man. as hell. As much as I want to take credit and say New Orleans is the greatest place where food is, it's up there. It's, it's up, up there. there, but it ain't like you gotta go to the, the country part of Louisiana, like your Appaloosas, your your Baton Rouge, Bogalusa, like all them places that sound country. Yeah. What are them butchers out there? Man, it's the best food you ever have. Promise you. I hope it ain't like uh, the water boy and y'all be cooking like alligators <laughs> out there. <laughs> it's like that a little bit. It's like that a little bit. I'm not going to lie to you. It's a little country out there. No. Bayou, man. The bayou. And hey, man, you got to say it right, man. It's Nolans. That's Nolans down there, man. Come on. <laughs> New Orleans. New Orleans. New Orleans. Feel me? That's it, man. And, and, and Kale, like, you, you've been all over the map, man. We were just talking about it a little bit before the show, like A-Ray said. You're born from, grew up New Orleans. You played at Tulane for a couple years. You transferred to Villanova. Now you're at Sioux Falls. Now you're on a road trip in California. But we've seen it from your time, man. When you're, when you're locked in, and it's certainly easy to get locked in when, you're, when you got minimal distractions in South Dakota. But right now, man, just you're a game-winning alley-oop. Uh, the other night uh, against South Bay, and, and you put up four games in a row now where you scored scored 20 points or more. So it, it's really it's a lot of fun to see you like this, see you playing like this. We've seen it from your time at Villanova. What is really kind of clicking right now for you? Um, I think what's really clicking for me is just, um, you know, just trusting my teammates, honestly, and trusting in the work that I've been putting in um, since pre-drive, since the summertime. And working out a lot and just been watching a lot of the film that the guys have for me, the coaches have for me, and just trusting in what they're saying and going out there and just doing it, honestly. And um, really, my talent is just taking over right now. They're finding me in the right spots, and I'm, I'm making the right plays, and they trust me to make the right plays. And we're kind of shorthanded right now mm. at the time as well. So, like, now it's just about next man up, what they taught us at Villanova. So I'm just using what I know and um, going out there and executing the best way I can. Yeah, and you, you mentioned, uh, you know, something that you were taught at Villanova. Uh, how is it, like, you know, your, the connections that you've made in, in your past? You know, you played with guys like, you know, Jermaine Samuels, Brandon Slater, Colin Gillespie. Are you still in touch with, with, with those guys? And some of the guys on the team now with Dixon and Moore, like, those those were your teammates, man, on, on a special Final Four run back in 22. Uh, last year, you guys battled through and, and wound up making the NIT, so... Uh, what are those connections like that you still you still have with with those guys? I'm still close with every last one of them. They my brothers forever, man. I can't wait to see them grow and develop into the men they need to be growing up and just all the plays that they're making right now on the court, bro. How successful they are, I'm happy for them. So we're still tight, man. We got group messages. We Facetime each other. It's literally like a brotherhood. Like I don't think there's no other place in America that compares to Villanova when it compares to Brotherhood. So, yeah, man, I'm, I'm grateful and I'm thankful that I have them. It definitely ain't. I could uh, I could co-sign that for you, definitely. <laughs> sure. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's definitely different. And, and since we're on that topic about, like, being different, how was that adjustment coming from Tulane um, into Villanova? Because, like you said, it's different. You know, me personally, you know, I, I, I never – I didn't transfer, so I always wonder what it's like for somebody coming into Nova and, like, how is it for them to adjust? Like, I know how it was for me to adjust, but how is it coming from a different program um, and how hard is it to uh, to adjust to Villanova? Oh, my gosh, man. <laughs> so, at, at Tulane, bro, I was arguably the man. Yeah. Yes. My first year yes. as a freshman, I, I – I had a solid freshman year, but I think it was understood that I was expected to make a big jump my sophomore year. And I ended up doing what I had to do. I had a great sophomore year, although we didn't have a great year as a collective, but I wanted to stay. 
But once I transferred, I thought it would be like a smooth transition because, you know, I'm, I'm coming into my own as a player. I'm developing at the right time. I'm thinking, okay, I would be a perfect fit for Villanova. Just because of, like, how talented I am, they could use a guy like me. Yeah. Man, I get there. I'm like, oh, my gosh. I feel like I'm a freshman all over again, and I'm a junior. I'm like, right. I have to relearn basketball. I don't mean to cut you off, but how did that come about? How did how did the relationship with Villanova come about? Like, before you even transferred, like, who, who reached out to you? Did you reach out to them? Like, how did that happen? So... Mike Dunleavy, who was my head coach at Tulane, was really good friends with Jay Wright. And Jay Wright would always, like, you know, watch the game from online or through the TV when we play and whatnot. And um, he would hit up Mike Dunleavy and, and tell him that, you know, I was really good, that they were looking at me and whatnot. So um, once, um, unfortunately, Mike Dunleavy got fired, Jay Wright reached out to Mike Dunleavy. And um, during, like, the time that he was exiting, he told me that, Jay Wright is, is looking to recruit you. He's looking to give you a call sometime. So be ready, see what he has to say, and, and see where it takes you. And that's how it all started. Okay. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it, it's funny, though, that you, you said, Caleb, you wanted to stay. And it, it made sense for you because you were comfortable. And, and you guys weren't doing much of winning, but you were doing a lot of scoring. And like you said, you were the man. And... Mm -hmm. You, you, you hear this from, from your coach, Coach Dunleavy says, hey, Coach Wright is looking at you, uh, wants to recruit you. Was that it? Was it like going over the only school that you would have transferred to? W were you hearing anything else? Or was it literally saying, wow, Coach Wright wants to recruit me? Like, this is an opportunity. I I'm going to take a look at it and, uh, and see what goes from there. So it, it's crazy. And they already made a little way about it. But um, there were only like – Three schools I really wanted to hear from. That was obviously Villanova, mm -hmm. um, Baylor, and UNC. Wow. Right. UNC never they, – they reached out to me, but I didn't really – once you guys reached out to me, I was just like, I want to hear what they say over what UNC has to say. Yeah. But um, once – so Neptune came, it did a home visit for me in New Orleans. No, nah, Neptune is making fun of New Orleans and whatnot. <laughs> Give me a hard time. Saying we ride on horses out here, but it's all love. I still love him to death. Um, he came and did a home visit for me first, and then Baylor did. And ended up having to choose between the two. I took an official visit to Villanova because I was just like, I really like, I really, I really like, you know, the culture and like how you guys play. So I just wanted to always like see it firsthand, you know, and, and be a part of that. So once I went on my visit, um, Coach Wright said one of the realest things to me, like the first day, like mid middle of the presentation, he stopped it and said, we can roll out the red carpet for you. We can do all this and that, but you got to want to be here. Like if, if we we doing all this and you don't come here, it's a waste of time. Like we want you to be a part of this culture to really learn it, to really learn from the older guys and, and where all has been through it. And um, him saying that, I, I've never had somebody come at me like that at all. So I had to respect it, and I was just like, in that moment, like, I mean, I'm coming back home. I mean, I ain't coming back <laughs> home at all. So uh, I remember that night, they put us in the Ritz in Philly. Yeah. And um, my parents and our room was right next to each other. And before, like, we all go to our room at night, we all have, like, a little nightcap, like, just talking about everything. The first night I said... I don't know, up in the air. I, I don't know if I'm gonna go back. I don't know if I'm gonna, you know, stay here. After that second day, I said, I ain't coming back home. <laughs> I'm gonna stay out here. Put myself to Philly. Oh, uh, what did it for you? What did it for you? I think um, that conversation did it for me. Um, obviously, being around campus, I'm an older guy, so like, the campus and everything didn't really, like, excite me. It didn't mm -hmm. really, like, wow me. <laughs> yeah. But, right. like, I know, like, just thinking about situational-wise, like, this can be really good for my future. If I stay at home where I'm comfortable, 
it's not realistic because if I go to the next level, it's like I'm not going to have the ball in my hand. I have to wait for the ball to come to me. I have to be able to defend and guard or I'm not going to play at all. And it lines up with Villanova. So I thought if I learn how to do all these things that I wasn't doing before I came here, maybe I can have a legitimate shot. But on top of that, like the brotherhood was amazing. Colin came on my visit and Dada stayed back after my visit too. Mm-hmm. And like, I felt like that connection between them two, I felt like I'd known them forever, bro. Like, I can't, you can't fake that type of vibe. I also felt like I was already there. Like, I was already a part of the team. Like, I went on a lot of visits in my day. And I've never felt like that. So, like, that in itself, I was just like, yeah, I'm I'm at home. Like, this, this feels like home. So, the rest is history. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, man. And and you you get there and you you realize, oh man, I, I gotta sit out for a year, right? You're like, I'm. I, what it sounds like it's like, man, I, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to play. Or were you kind of like thinking, okay, I'm gonna benefit from from this year, sitting on the sideline, learning and practice, learning from these guys, and really kind of just getting really absorbed into the Villanova culture. Like, what was your mindset when it came to to that year off? So first off, I've never had to sit out healthy. Like I've never had to take a whole year off. Right. right. Sorry, it's not a year off. It's just red shirt. But no, exactly. Man, I was just. I knew it was like I knew it was gonna be good for me. Just coming into the next year, I had to step in and 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 play the role I had to play. But that was probably the hardest year because like I'm sitting out and I'm healthy. Like I'm you got a full. 6'4", stocky guard on the bench, waiting <laughs> to play, but I can't play because I got a red shirt. But also, we got a stacked roster. We got Sadiq Bay, Colin, Maine, Jeremiah, Dada, uh, Brandon. We got, and the guys coming off the bench, too. Like, we had a really good team, so I was just like, shoot. I mean, I play anyway, so I must, I, I have to learn this, bro. Like, this is a really good team. <laughs> So every day, bro, I would, I would ride Colin Cotel, ask him questions. I'll probably aggravate the hell out of him, asking so many questions because I don't know anything. Um, I'll spend some time talking to Coach Wright about our offense, our defense, playing the Villanova way and whatnot, and just learning stuff on the fly. So I think me being able to, like, do that and to learn from those guys, that was big time for me. Yeah, that's uh that's that's one of the big things with Villanova is like, you know, that that development and there's a lot of guys that uh that redshirted through that program. Mikel is one of those guys and uh you see where he's at now. Um you you play both under Coach Wright and Coach Neptune. Can you tell me a little bit about like what you learned from each of them? I learned almost the same thing from both, but I would say what makes them different is, I want to say my role mm-hmm. in both teams. I think that um, with Coach Wright, it was more of getting me to play under control a little bit more, like getting me to master the fundamentals, getting me to master how to play through the system and how to play like the Villanova way, jump stopping, pivot, pivot, being nasty, guarding hard, doing everything hard, helping hard, everything. And um, that's what helped us get to the Final Four and whatnot. Um, I think with Coach Neb, from the beginning, he just always wanted me to be nasty. Like, whatever you do, be nasty. Like, don't <laughs> do it half-assed or anything. So, like, my red shirt here, Coach Wright would coach me a lot, but, like, he had to worry about the guys that were actually playing. Nep was the actual one, like, putting me through these insane-ass military workouts <laughs> where you got to fight for walk-ons to get a rebound to get five in a row. Like, it would be the craziest shit, but it would be realistic because that's game-like. Yeah. That's what you have to do in a game. So, with that, with Nep, it was just, like, he needs you to do this consistently and be nasty. Cause that's how you're gonna stay out there in your first year. And um in my last year, he taught me um 
you just let my, my talent honestly take over and just play under control while also letting your talent take over as well. So he gave me a little bit more of a free reign to like make decisions and whatnot. But um, I'm thankful for both. Yeah, and, and Coach Wright was, you know, on his way out. Obviously, you guys didn't know, but certainly you learned a lot just from him being there those two years. And then Coach Neptune was a constant, right? You know, he was there at, at the beginning. He went to, goes to Fordham for one season, and it comes back at the end uh, for your final year at Villanova. But we all know the difference between the two and the similarities. Coach Wright being always cool as the other side of the pillow, at least, you know, from the outside perspective. Can you give us a little peek behind the curtain where there was a moment in time, whether it was, you know, half halftime, a uh, moment in practice where he, he kind of was fired up and it was going at somebody? I'm pretty sure Air Ray have a lot, a lot of stories. <laughs> oh, I, I do. I, talk me to pinpoint one story. This Coach, so many times. Coach Wright came on here and, and talked about when he kicked me out of practice. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, for real? He came on here and he talked about it. He talked about it. he kicked me out of practice. We was doing a one-on-one drill. We was doing one-on-one drill, bro. Uh, practice had just started. We just did our warm-up and everything. I still ain't loose, you know what I'm saying? So we do a one-on-one, and it's Mike Nardi, Kyle Lowry, Randy Foy. Like, that's that's my line. So Mike scores on me, then Kyle comes and scores on me. Then Randy scores on me, and Coach Wright is like, he's like, Alan, he was like, play defense. He's like, you're going to be here all day. He's like, until you get a stop. He was like, get low. You know, Coach Wright, he's like, get low, get in the stance. So I'm like, all right. So I'm playing defense. <laughs> and I think Randy comes down, Randy scores on me again. Bro, mind you, Randy's the number one, number seven pick in the draft. So Randy comes and scores on me. Coach Wright's like, you can't stop nobody. He's like, you can't stop nobody. He's like, get low. He's like, get effing low and slide your feet. So me, I get super low. I'm talking about like damn near my ass is touching the ground. I'm, I'm low <laughs> as hell. And Mike, <laughs> and Mike Nardi just like blows right past me and goes get the layup. He's like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, get out of here. He's like, go in the locker. I'm like, nah, I'm not getting off the court, coach. I'm like, I'm not going nowhere. He's like, get off the court. Coach Pinkney comes over, has to, like, bring me in the locker room. I'm like, damn, coach. I'm like, the yo, I'm. That's what is crazy. Yeah, I'm like, coach, like, we got pros on our team. Like, I'm not going to stop them every single time. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But you know how coach right is. He don't want to hear that. Bro. <laughs> I, I got I got a story now. So this was um during the season, my my red shirt year. And um, you know how like you, you have like a little Christmas break and you come back, how them first a couple practices are, right? Yeah. So I, I forgot who we were preparing for, but it was a road game that we were like getting ready for. It. And it was like a scrimmage day, like an intra squad uh scrimmage day. And um whenever you're on a white team, you get free reign to do whatever and you know that. That's a fact. So well, every team I'm on, I'm like, we filing, we we not doing any of the concepts, we doing whatever we want. <laughs> and on the blue team was Sadiq, Colin Maine, Jeremiah, and I think Dada. I, I can't remember that that fifth guy, but I remember I was scoring this whole day. I I don't play a lick, I didn't play a lick of defense at all this whole day. <laughs> but I'm getting buckets. I'm thinking, oh yeah, I'm doing good. Like yeah. defense on possession. Sadiq shoots the ball, gets the rebound. I, I don't even box out. I just run back on defense. I, he's just not even, like, thinking about defense. He shoot the ball. I just run back. He get the rebound, go dunk the ball. Coach Wright yells at me. Hagen Ward, come on. <laughs> I'm like, he can't be talking to me. I'm not playing this upcoming game. We're about, we about, like, 20-something. I'm cool. So next possession comes down. And I'm at this point, I'm really tired though. So, like, next play comes down, the D gets it again, blows by me. I'm not in my stance, I'm just standing straight up, hunched over, looking like I'm tired, breathing hard. The D gets the ball, blows by me, go and dunk the ball. Coach Wright is running with me on the side <laughs> as I'm running down the court. Tired. I'm not gonna say exactly what he said, but you, <laughs> 
I start guarding after that. I start doing stuff I never did before. So that's just one one story I had, man. Yeah, you weren't tired anymore after that. <laughs> I wasn't tired at all, bro. I was I was ready to go after that. Yo, was that the first time like he yelled at you? Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. That that'll do it too. Like you see Coach Wright on the on the outside off the court, like you know he's the coolest person on the in the world. And then when you get in the court, and then that first time like he go after you, you like. Like, hold mm-hmm. on. Like, why are you why are you talking to me like this? Like, hold on. For Man. me, he, he was talking to me like that. I was like, I think I looked back and I said something. I was like, Oh, we who are you talking to? We we <laughs> all court, but that was crazy, bro. After that, that's when I was like, okay, I, I know what it is. He expects something of me, so I gotta do it. Yeah, that's all it is, though. He's just trying to push, trying to push players and get them. To, to reach their potential, be the best that they could be. You know, when you're young, you don't really see it so much and don't really understand it so much, but it's all it, it, it was all to try to, like, make us better players. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So. What about, what about you, OC? What about, like, your practices back in the day? Oh, man, you're killing me with this, man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, no it's, it's so great, though, man, because it, I literally now have a complete – idea in my head about how build over basketball practices go from talking to a ray all this time caleb you colin jermaine we had chris jenkins daniel chef who on the show so i'd like to think i know more than most just from listening to you guys and the stories that you have and 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 kind of just how hard it was but also how rewarding so I, i i'm definitely i think you know more aware of of how how intense and how really just fun it can get with the the battles that you guys go through like uh phil booth i remember was on the show telling us about like you mentioned it a little bit caleb with uh, the drill against the walk-ons and he was saying like mikhail when he was in his red shirt year would have the walk-ons just like beat the crap out of him you know as he's trying to get to the hoop we had coach ashley howard on here he was telling us some great stories like it, it's it's honestly just an honor and a pleasure just to, to listen to some of this stuff because it is gold. It is gold. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, but, but Caleb, I, I did want to ask you, like, the, the 2022 season was a, a, an incredibly special group of guys, and I feel like it really, for Villanova fans, it made up for what we thought the COVID year was going to be. Because that, t- that team, when you, you mentioned before, the, 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 it was stacked, right? I mean, we had Sadiq and, and Jermaine, Jeremiah, Colin. Everybody was there at the same time. We had a deep bench. And obviously, COVID hit. We get cut short. And a team that was 24 and 7 at the time, you think, oh, man, like, we, we had an opportunity to be a top three seed. We had a chance to make a run in the Final Four. Well, that's exactly what you guys did in 2022. But it, even the year before, though, Colin goes down with an injury, and you guys get the Sweet 16, lose to Baylor. Like, you, you can't tell me that those two years weren't wouldn't have ended up in, in a more successful ending. But you guys go to the Final Four in 22. Uh, you lose one game to UConn uh, in February, so around this time. Then you rattle off, like, 10 wins in a row. Can you tell us, can you take us back, you know, to the mindset of the team at that moment? Of like, all right, we're wrapping up regular season. We're heading into the Big East tournament. Are you guys thinking about what's going on on the outside in terms of, all right, this is how many wins we need to get to be in a position to be that? Or are you like, you know what? Screw that. We're going to lock in and just try to get as many Ws as possible. Like, What is that mindset you know, at this time of the year for a, a Villanova basketball team? Well, after that UConn loss, obviously we was pretty pissed about it. Um, right. Was that when that dude hit that floater? The left hand? Man, what's, yeah, what's his name? Bro. What's his name? Davis? RJ Not- Cole. Cole. RJ Cole, yeah. Oh, my God. That was the luckiest shot in the world. But go ahead. <laughs> yeah. The thing about that game really makes me upset. But, like, mm-hmm. that game kind of gave us a fuel to the fire. Um, 
we didn't really approach it like we need this many wins to get this seeding or anything. We never approached it that way. What right. with us, it was just like even from the beginning of the season, it was just like got the guys, got everybody we need, got all we got. Let's let's make this shit happen. Like to get the wins and the losses, let's go on and, and do what we need to do in practice to make sure we get each other better for these games. Cause we know nobody can't mess with us. On defense, we getting a stop every time. Offense, nobody stopping us when we sharing the ball. Cause we all could break our man down and, and get each other an open look. So it was like we got from top guy to the guy on the bench. We got hoopers. We got guys that can get it done. And that's willing to play villain over basketball. So that that's the biggest thing with us. I think during that time going into the Big East tournament, I think our first game we played St. John's. Yeah. Boy, that was an ugly game from the beginning. You guys so were like, down like 17 in that game, man. Bro, we were down 17, but it felt like 30. Dang. <laughs> Boy, they were making every shot, pressing. And I remember they went on a run early second half. Mm. And Coach Wright called a timeout. I've never seen that man so calm in my life. We were down, I think we were down maybe 21 at this point. And he was so calm. He was like, okay, okay. Reel it back in. Get it done one possession at a time. I could tell in his eyes, he was like, we got this shit. Like, come on, let's lock in. And like, you know, there's a lot of like different expressions that go without saying. We all knew what time it was. So we locked in. We got one stop at a time, one bucket at a time. Before you know it, Slate get the and one, we cut it to two, and boom, we take the lead. And then we ended up getting a win at the end. And um, every game after that was just a tough, hard-fought battle from U- from St. John's to UConn to Creighton in a championship. Mm-hmm. And we stuck together, and we just we got it done. And going into um NCAA tournament, it was the same attitude, like, Let's, let's lock in and get it done. We got a team to win the Natty or to get to the Final Four. We, we got that. So let's let's do it. Let's get it done. Unfortunately, our our guy Justin went down. I think if we had him, we for sure would have been taking that, that Natty home for sure. But Easy. Um, everything happens for a reason. So that was probably the most memorable uh, of my time there, the, the best part of my career at Villanova, honestly. That – uh. And I'm not going to lie to you, that 2022 team, I didn't think y'all was going to the Final Four. I had y'all probably going to, like, I probably had y'all going to, like, the Sweet 16. But Damn. but y'all clicked. That's that's the thing. Like, you're talking about the Big East tournament. Y'all clicked, y'all clicked late. Y'all clicked real late and started, like, really putting together. And I remember Mano. Mano started to come, Mano started to come on and, like, he was playing some unbelievable ball at the end of the year, so I, I was I was really surprised, and I was shocked, but I was I was super happy, and I'm not even gonna say I was surprised because you know it's it's, it's Villanova, it's like you guys, and I know the type of coaching y'all get, you know, type of plays you are, so I was definitely happy to see you guys in there, but I I just didn't expect y'all to get to that final four, but that's mm-hmm. just the beauty about like. Villanova, Villanova, like you, you come to school, you come to a school like Villanova because you want to go to the Final Four, you want to play in Big East championships, you know what I'm saying? You want to play against UConn twice in a year while they're the number one team. So, that, that, I just want to congratulate y'all on that, on, on making that uh 20 2022 Final Four. Appreciate you, bro. Thank you, bro, bro. But what happened against Kansas? <laughs> You kidding me, A Ray? <laughs> had to ask that one. I knew that was coming. Yeah. Though. Yeah. Um. I'll be I know what happened. I was watching the game. Yeah. I was watching the game. I see. I saw some. I saw some lapses on defense. But I'm not putting. No, I'm sure. not gonna put no people's names out there. You. You not. You not on there. <laughs> For sure, but we. It's a team sport, so I mean. It is. It is. I, I can't. I, I'm not gonna point the finger. I wasn't perfect in that game either. No. Nah. You don't have to do it. That's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I leave it to you. I leave it to you. But I think um, honestly, hats off to them because they was it was rolling from the start. Nah, they was good. They they punched us in the mouth early. Um, 
you know, we didn't we didn't give in at all. We kept fighting back, fighting back, but they just kept pulling away with whatever they had. So, um, ass off to them. Congratulations to them. But um, can't really say how I really feel about that. But <laughs> ass off to them, man. Ass off to them. I mean, you guys had it was a hell of a run, and you got your revenge against UConn in the Big East semifinal. You beat Creighton, like you mentioned before, and that just, I think it was like you guys won 54-49 or something. It was a low-scoring game. And then you, you go to battle a couple times along the way. Ohio State, Michigan, you know, two highly touted Big Ten teams. And then Houston, right? That that Houston Elite Eight game, I remember Epic. we talked about it with Jermaine and Colin, man. That was a all-out war. I mean, can you take us through that, that game? Because those guys, Kelvin Sampson... And those dudes could could battle. I mean, they were out there, you know, just tackling. Basically, it was a physical game. And, and I really think the the winner. I, I, I would say if, if Houston had beaten you guys, then they would have taken the national championship. But if yeah. I, I, I agree with you, if JMO stays, stays healthy, different story for us. But man, just take us through that game because it was unbelievable. Yeah, real quick, Caleb. Um, same same with the question with with OC about that Houston game. Like, y'all slowed that game down so, so much. Like, y'all slowed that game down so much. Like, was that, like, I know Coach Wright put that put that together, but, like, why did he want to slow the game down so much? But answer OC question, but try to remember that one. All right, but, um, man, that game was an absolute bloodbath, bro. Like, <laughs> man, that was probably, um, our hardest game in that tournament, honestly. Um, from the start, it was just like, for me, it was just the anticipation of going out there and just like, like I've never been here. I've never been in Elite Eight, but yeah, honestly, what gave us con- what gave me confidence for sure was I got Colin, I got Jermaine. They ain't worried, I ain't worried. So it's like I can't look scared out there. I got to go out there and, and, like, step up for my brothers. Yeah. So, going into the game, we knew how hard it was going to guard Kyle in the whole game. And Justin, too. So, it was just like, I got to I gotta step up and I got to be able to, you know, produce and make some decisions for the team. And and Maine as well. So, once the game started, it was just like, we in attack mode from the start. Maine, killing the whole tournament, he carried his energy into that game. And that helped us from beginning to end. So he did an amazing job of just carrying us and just keeping that going for us as well. Um, Justin and Solid being solid with the ball. Um, that was big time for us. Um, me stepping up and making plays for the team in times of need. And Slate Garden, Eric being a big guy, a big presence down there for us. I think that's what um, really got us that win because um, we know how physical, how fast they like to play. And that – Leads to your question, A Ray. Like we slowed it down because once they get going in transition, you know how deadly they can be. Yeah. So we just make them work, grind them out on our end on offense, make them work for the full 30. They'll be too tired enough to go on the other end and try to get a bucket quick too. So um that's pretty much why we slowed it down. And also I think we were better in our half court set than our transition um that whole year, honestly. So we got too many pieces to not make them work, to not make them grind through the shot clock. Got Colin trying to create his own shot and create for others. J-Mo, Jermaine as well, being a present down there, a, a threat. Eric, his post work is clutch, and also he can step out through threes. Mm-hmm. And me as the wild card, who can also do whatever. And Slate also is the wild card. So we got so many things to our advantage. It was just like, we can play at our pace and play slow and, and be fine. So I think that's how we got the win. Yeah, that was a master class. It definitely was. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it was great. Like the 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 place of play has been for Villanova. I feel like has now been you know very much so like defined in, in Villanova's offensive identity is a slow pace of play, and that certainly can lead to success as we've seen on that in that run. I mean, you guys were were being physical, and and CD, you you. Described it based like basically to a T how you guys were using your advantages in that same exact mindset. And obviously, last year was a little bit different. Justin Moore 
was hurt. We had a younger team. We lost some guys, but you, Eric, Slate, you guys were doing your thing. And what seemed like what almost was a lost season, all of a sudden you guys win six out of seven games. And you, you look like you're that, that. I remember the win against Creighton at home. Eric had like 30 points. You guys beat them. You guys shut down Cockburner. And it looked like you guys were firing on all cylinders. It was the best game you guys played all year. And it was like perfect timing. Can you take us back to that moment? Can you take us back to that kind of that vibe that you guys had? Because it looked like from A Ray and I's perspective, from, from Nova Nation's perspective, that all right, here we go. You guys are clicking at the right time. You're going to make some moves heading into March. What what were you guys thinking back then? Well, before that Creighton game, when we won at, I think it was at Wells Fargo, it was just like, honestly, let Eric work. Mm -hmm. That's what I, that was with my head, at least. Let Eric work. He has the mismatch out of all of us, and he has, it, he has been getting it going before that game. So I was just thinking if we utilize Eric, like in a pick and pop that whole game, he's gonna kill Cockburner, which he did, ended up getting 30 and whatnot, leading us to that win. And also like him doing that got other people open too, got other people clean looks. J Mo got off a little bit in that game. Cam was killing that game. Mm. And everybody else making shots here and there, of course. But I think what really um was our anchor in those six or seven games was our defense. Our defense was our backbone. We was getting stops, getting on transition, getting everybody look, looks, open looks, everybody's making shots. So um, I think in that time period, it was just like a, a do or die mentality. Like whatever happens, happens. Like if we play our hardest and we play for each other, I mean, we're gonna let the chips fall where they fall. So that was our mindset going into those games. Yeah, uh, Coach Neptune mentioned, I remember everyone was kind of thinking, it's like, man, it, if the regular season had, had been extended by two weeks, I think you guys would have would have been able to kind of continue to grow on that momentum and really start, you know, putting together more wins. And and then all of a sudden it's like, hey, Villanova's playing like Villanova. So uh, what do you think about that? Would you agree with that, uh, that, that, oh, that yeah. notion? Hell yeah. I think we were too talented to like, I mean, I think we should have made it regardless, but if we had a, a you know, a little bit more time and, you know, get mm -hmm. some more regular season games in, we would have made it for sure, definitely. Well, y'all needed me on a white team, bro. I'd have got y'all right. Yo, I remember white teams used to be giving us fits some 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 days too. I ain't gonna lie. But uh, I got I got one more question for you. Um kind of gonna backtrack a little bit, um, talking about you know, transferring to Nova. So you came from from Tulane. Um, they was in the AAC, right? Yeah. If I'm not mistaken. Okay, so basically what I want to know is the difference between AAC and coming into a conference like the Big East. Because I feel like now with the transfers that we got in, don't get me wrong, I feel like, you know, we got some great guys. But I feel like there was a little bit of a, a t not talent, I would say talent for lack of a better word when it came to like the conferences, you know what I'm saying? Like, do you think yeah. that plays a, a an effect coming into the Big East from like a smaller conference? You know, Big East is different, tough, um, battle every single night, you know, you going against pros. So like, w w what's, your, what's your thoughts on like transfers coming from smaller conferences into like the Big East? Well, I think from my experience, um, coming from the ACC, there was a lot of like teams with guys that had individual talent, guys that were like me coming from like Tulane or Memphis or Wichita State. Schools like that at the time were like top programs. Houston as well. Yeah. They were like probably one of the few complete teams at the time in the AAC. But me coming from the AAC to the Big East was like, damn. This is high level basketball. Like yeah. everybody on this court is good enough to make it to the pro. So it was just like a matter of um locking into the little details for me. But I think for other guys, um coming from small schools to a, a bigger conference like the Big East, it could be a little bit tougher because they're so used to having their own way in the AAC to where you gotta get adjusted to 
the physicality, the athleticism, the, the, the skill level, the talent, the great coaching. Like, the game plan in the Big East is, is so much more different than what it was in the AAC. And I think that was kind of, like, the, the deciding factor on, you know, like, how things are, honestly. Yeah. So that's what yeah. makes the Big East, like, way better than the AAC for me. Okay, or yeah. That's makes that transition harder, you know? Yeah, I just definitely was uh, something I was thinking about, something I was wondering. And, uh, you know, I felt like it, it probably could have some type of effect on uh, players, you know, transferring different conferences and stuff like that. So I just wanted to, like, hear your thoughts on that. Mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, yeah, CD, exactly, man. Like, you know, you got the year to sit out. You learned the difference between the AAC and the Big East. And when I say sit out, like you were still doing your thing, you're still learning, you're still, you know, just absorbing what it what it takes to be a little Nova basketball player. But that, you know, you had so much more time than these four transfers this year that didn't have, that didn't get to have the red shirt year, didn't have the time to develop, and were just basically thrown into fire. So mm -hmm. what can you say to everybody out there that's saying like, oh man, like you know, these guys were really a, a disappointment to to what we thought we were gonna get. Like, what do you say to that being like, all right, like, come on, like, these guys didn't have that full year that, that you had, that, that Eric Paschal had when he transferred from Fordham? Like, what do, you, what do you think about that, CD? Man, I would say to those people, give them some grace. I mean, it, it's tough leaving your old school that you've been there for four years. You were the man almost all four years and then having to transfer to another place that's an elite place that you have to learn, relearn everything almost as if you're a freshman again. And play. It's not like you're a red shirt and how I did. You had a whole year to learn behind guys that were like established, like Colin and Jermaine or anybody else. You had to go in and make a way for yourself in your first year transferring. That's tough. Yeah. But I say just give them some grace and give them some time in which I think they have come into their own a little bit this year. Um, they're kind of struggling a little bit, but like, I think they've done an amazing job, you know, trying to just um, adjust to it and, and trying to get used to the Big East, to get used to playing Villanova basketball every game, every single day. So I think if we just give them some grace, they'll come through just when we need them to. I love it. I love it, man. I appreciate that, CD. We, you know, we had to we had to get you, you being a transfer to then relate to the transfers this year and basically calm everybody down because that's all we've been here about. So we appreciate you coming on the show tonight, man. Uh, Caleb, you know, it's been a pleasure. A. Ray and I really enjoyed ourselves. So uh, we just want to say thank you, my friend. Thank you. I yeah, appreciate y'all for having me, man. I'm cool, bro. 16 and 11 right now this year. That's progress. It's progress. Uh, hey, hey, we still got time. We still got time, man. It's not over yet. I think we're in a good position. Yeah, for sure. Slow progress is better than no progress. Hey, you yeah. forgot, you forgot, but I know you, uh, like, you wifed up and stuff like that, so this don't apply to you, but, you know, leaving your old girlfriends to come to a new school, you got to get new girlfriends, that's another uh, transition as well. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't comment on that one. I'm yeah. good. I was like, no just <laughs> OC was looking like he, he, was, yeah. he was waiting for me to answer. He, but. Yeah, I was. I was. Like, OC is like, where A Ray going with this? <laughs> oh man, that's good. That's good. Oh man. Uh, so Caleb, if you could just, uh, I'll send it. I'll send you uh, the the link when we post it on on X, and if you could just repost it or whatever, quote tweet it, whatever you want to do, that would be great, man. We'd appreciate that. So sure, man, I got you. Yo, y'all played the uh, Skyhawks yet? No, I think we played them soon, though, back in the suit. All right. Yeah, hit, hit me up. Or oh, I'll hit you up because... Back I'm, in the suit. I'm, oh. That's great. Y'all not, uh, not coming to Atlanta? If y'all come to Atlanta... Yeah. Damn, y'all not coming to Atlanta? No, nah, we, we finish our uh, games in March at, at home. All right. Yeah. I think next year we probably should, though. They probably flip-flop the schedule next year. Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah. Well, I hope you ain't in Sioux Falls well, yeah, next gonna, year, bro. You're gonna be in the league next year. Uh, That's what I'm not. saying. That's what I'm saying. I hope you ain't at Sioux, Sioux Falls next year, bro. You know what? God willing. I wanna yeah, I would say God willing. You know. Well, you I keep wanna... playing like the way you're playing, man. You'll be okay. <laughs> yeah, 
Hey man, it's, if it's in the plans, it's in the plans, you know? That's right, that's right. Caleb Daniels, everyone. Oh man, that was a lot of fun chopping it up with our guy CD. Had some great insight, some great stories. But most importantly, man, just his experience as a transfer, that is exactly what we want to hear. Like, it, it is just a peek behind the curtain in terms of what it takes to, to transfer. We've got four of them dudes this season, and they didn't get no redshirt year, A. Ray. So it's a little bit a little bit of a different situation, but what an awesome, awesome story he, he told about Coach Neptune coming to, coming to visit him, convince him uh, to come from Tulane, from New Orleans to Philly, Coach Wright saying he could roll, could roll out the red carpet and be like, "Yo, are you are you for real, or, or is this just you know for show?" So I, I, I'm I'm fired up right now, man. That was great. That's exactly what we were hoping for when it comes to coming bringing Caleb on the show and uh, raining threes, man. We did it again, a Ray. Come on, it's all you, OC. Like you, the man. You know what I'm hey. saying? I gotta I gotta give you your props. Hey, I appreciate that, man, but I, I couldn't be doing this without you, so I, I don't think anyone would want to come on my show if you, if you weren't with me, so I appreciate you, my friend, seriously. I think it was, a, uh, I appreciate that, OC. I think it was good yeah, to man. hear to hear uh, Caleb's perspective when he talked about uh, transferring from conferences, smaller yeah. conferences into the Big East. That was something that, you know, I was kind of thinking about over the past month or two, when it came to our team, it's like, I don't, it's not necessarily like they can't play on this level. I think they just had to get used to playing on this level, if that make if, if that makes sense. No, I, I think you're 100% right. And he brought up a great point about how it's a lot of individual talent in some of the other conferences, right? Uh -huh. Like the AEC specifically, when he mentioned it, a lot of individual talent. Nobody plays like more cohesive with more team-like dynamics. Like, the the culture is very strong from Villanova, UConn, St. John's now with Pitino. You see what he pulled off by literally just insulting and making fun of his guys for not being able to move laterally. They're unathletic, you know, whatever. That to Providence, to Seton Hall, to Xavier, all these great coaches, all these great just places to play college ball – it's it's a different animal. The Big East is just on another level when it comes to college troops, they Ray. And you, you made a great point, and I'm glad Caleb was able to prove it by just talking a little bit about his his personal experience playing in the AEC versus the Big East. So that was great, man. Seriously. Yeah, um, definitely was. And that 2022 run that they had when they went to the Final Four, man, that was so unexpected for me. I mean, maybe other people might have expected that, but. It was so unexpected for me. I kind of started feeling the magic a little bit after they beat uh, Michigan. I want to say mm -hmm. I think it was Michigan. And then it was Ohio State. It was next. Ohio, yeah, it was Ohio oh, State, was and, State then, and, then Michigan. and then Michigan. Yeah. yeah, but once we played those two teams back-to-back -back and we won, I kind of started feeling the magic a little bit. But uh, I've never been part of a Final Four team, made it to the Elite Eight, so definitely had to give uh, Caleb his props just being able to just get on that stage. I would die to play in a Final Four. Yeah, man. Oh, absolutely. But Like, put me in a casket as soon as the game is over. <laughs> oh, man. But, hey, you, you certainly had some good tournament memories, uh, but also some, some heartbreaking ones as well. So I, I feel for you, man, because, uh, you know, little OC, which I think I was in fifth grade, uh, fifth grade was in 2009 when Scotty made made that uh, buzzer beater to beat Pitt. Mm -hmm. So I must have been in second grade when chill, I was watching you play. You, you're making me feel old, bro. <laughs> chill, chill, chill. <laughs> but, but, man, uh, a lot of great memories when you guys uh, beat Arizona, beat BC uh, in the second round and then Sweet 16. And hey, you, you lost the eventual champs, man. So, you know, you, you can't, really, can't really complain. And that's what those guys did in 22. And it, even in 21 as well against Baylor. So, uh, really, just a great conversation with Caleb. Um, really wish him all the best because he seems to be locked in right now playing some great basketball for the Sioux Falls Sky Force. And to be honest with you, A-Ray, that UConn loss that we just suffered on Saturday night, listen, we our shots weren't falling. We got to shake that one off. We did exactly that. 
We count, we go home, take care of business against Georgetown. And now we got three games left to play at Seton Hall, at Providence, at Providence is on Saturday, then at Seton Hall next Wednesday. And then we wrap up the regular season at home uh, against Creighton at the Wells Fargo Center. So it's all out there for the Taken A Ray. And I'm hoping that this year we get to add to some more March Madness memories in the big dance. So we'll see. Uh, you know, what are you what are you feeling right now? You you feel some magic like you did uh, back in 22 or what? Man, we gotta protect home court. Protect mm-hmm. home court. So that means we gotta get that Creighton win. Um and then for me, I, I really don't care if it's <laughs> Providence or Seeing Hall. Yeah. I just I just feel like the Creighton game with them being a ranked team all year, with them knocking off UConn and with us beating them twice in a year, that like that will put us in like 18 wins and a be- uh, and a win against Creighton, like they're gonna consider us heavily, and Got you. that's that's why I said that today about like just beat Creighton, beat Creighton, and I don't care what other team it is, Seton Hall or Providence, just you gotta try to get one, you gotta try to get two out the three, and Got you, man. I, I feel like. <sighs> I don't know, man. Pro- <laughs> Pro- Providence, Providence is always a, a tough place to play at. It is. It's, it's it is. always a tough place to play at, but Providence doesn't have their full roster, but they still do have a good team. Yeah, yeah. Carter, Oduro, those guys are, yes. are beasts. And, and you know, uh, Arquette took care of business tonight. They came out, punched him in the mouth. It was 22-4 to in a blink of an eye. Mm-hmm. And more, and Providence just couldn't really get over the hump. Tick and Gates played a really good game, um, but you know Providence right now a little staggering after losing that that game against Marquette in the way that they did. So Saturday I think is a real opportunity to to for Villanova to look back and say, all right, we beat them a couple Sundays ago in our own building. And we did a lot of good things. Providence really didn't play that well. I'm not expecting them to to come out and lay an egg like they did. Yeah. But I really think that the way that Villanova, we've beaten Providence at home, we've beaten Seton Hall at home, both by, you know, 20 plus points. I think Providence, I think we won by 18. So around that 20 point margin, we could try to replicate some of the good things we did in, in those wins. And I think that really does uh, do us some favors moving forward. And A Ray, I'm here to tell you right now, I think we're going to win all three. I think we're going to win all three of these games. And we're going to be taking a nice deep breath, heading into the Big East tournament, and we're going to be playing a little bit of house money, maybe win a game or two on that, and you know, then it's like, okay, we're good on Selection Sunday. But I, I like what you're saying, taking a little bit more of a conservative approach, going two out of three. I'll take that too. I just want to be, I just want to be in the conversation on Selection Sunday, excited, fired up uh, for the future of this team. Because uh, it's it's coming up, A Ray. You know, it's 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 March. It is basically March. Uh, and A Ray, this has been a blast to, to do all season long. But it's crunch time now, baby. You know, it's crunch time now. We're gonna have some guests on to come help us cover some of this bubble uh, situations when it comes to the Big East. Maybe a little preview of the Big East tournament, and hopefully the big dance uh, come you know the end of March. So we'll see, man. A lot, a lot of a lot of fun things ahead potentially mm-hmm. if this Wildcat team can go out there and take care of business in this final stretch of the regular season. So we'll see, man. We will see. I, I just hope we get to the tournament. It's just going to be like a big weight lifted off of everybody's shoulders. Everybody could like kind of relax a little bit and uh, and, and kind of feel good about about this year, this year's team. It's not what we all wanted. Well, I'm I'm saying it like the season is over. It's not it's not what everybody expected right away. But the season's not over, so let's see what these guys have left in their tank. Because Villanova basketball, the most cliche saying is what we want to be playing our best basketball by the end of the year. Mm-hmm. Which that 2022 team um, Even gave last the, year. Yeah, Even last yeah. year too, right? They gave you an example of that. So I'm 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 rooting for these guys. I don't know why I feel like I, I just feel like 
That damn Seton Hall game scares me. It does, man. I, these are two hostile environments. I completely agree. But I just you look at how we played against them last time. I know it was at home. I know that's a completely different story. But you got to think that gives our guys confidence. And we got J-Mo playing his best basketball of the season right now, man. He looks like old J-Mo. He does. Did he play? Did he play last uh, game against Seton Hall? Yeah. Or we, was he yeah. out? He pl- He played. He played, but he he still wasn't himself though. He was still yeah. uh, putting up you know short arm in his shots and not not using his legs and was sitting front and front end of the rim. But now like what what he how he looked against against Georgetown, starting to starting to really come together for our guy J Mo man. I think that's perfect timing, and I think if he plays the way that he can play when he's healthy, if he's if he's got his legs underneath him, he's got that you know bit of burst and explosiveness. Hey, uh, watch out. This this could be a team that could be reckoned with, and it could be the team that everyone thought that, okay, these guys can be that. We've seen the ceiling. We've seen the what it's like to, to play really well, have us clicking on all cylinders. You take a look back at what we did in Atlantis. You take a look back at what we did at Creighton. You know, we've had some great moments this season, A-Ray, and I think that we got to put those together here now coming up on March and – I, I wouldn't want to play us right now. That's all I'm going to say, Ray. That's all I'm going to say. I feel you, OC. And uh, let's just say, let's just take it game by game. Let's yep. let's let's see how let's see how it goes this first game, exactly. and then we we go from there. But if you ask me if I think this team will make it into the NCAs, I would say yes. Absolutely. I would I would I would say yes. But if you ask me the schedule and the results for the next three games, I can't I can't help you with that. I feel you. I feel you, man. And uh, it's been a lot of fun to chop it up with you once again tonight. Some more content for Brain 3s to come. Thank you to Caleb Daniels. Uh, just shout out to him. Great, uh, great guy. Transfer from, from Tulane who had a, a great career for Villanova and is now killing it with the Sioux Falls Sky Force of the NBA's G League. So, uh, props to him. Really appreciate it. And uh, looking forward to, to w- what March brings us, A-Ray. So hopefully you guys enjoy the episode. I am your host, Mike O'Connell, here with Nova Hoops legend Alan Ray. Thank you guys so much for listening, and have a great rest of your weekend. Good night, Nova Nation. Good night, everybody. Have a good one. Peace.